This is the second video on looking at uh, vulnerabilities that we have in a computer and really looking at ways we can prevent people from exploiting those vulnerabilities or causing damage to our computer. So we're going to take each one in turn like before and explain how it's useful. Let's talk about penetration testing. So this is quite useful. This is the idea that after you've built something, you should really get, well, somebody else ideally to test it and to test to see if somebody can access your network or your website in a way that you hadn't expected. So let's say I've built a website, um, and but I've not built it very well, I've not followed good defensive design considerations, and I've got like a, a search box here that you can look at. So there's like, a, yeah, there's a um, example of a search box, and you can type anything in here, and it directly accesses the database, okay? So it directly accesses the database. I haven't done the really important thing, which is remove special characters, that thing called input sanitization so it is vulnerable to an sql injection attack if you're not sure what that is have a look at the separate video about sql injection it'll explain it quite well but i've left it vulnerable to sql injection ideally what would happen is that i'd pay somebody to have a look at my website and go hang on a minute I can easily run an SQL injection attack on that. That is a problem. You need to go and fix it. So this is the idea of penetration testing, that you are, uh, it could be yourself, but you ideally get somebody else to test to see if they can break your network or your website. The key difference is here, while a hacker would then use that vulnerability to cause you some sort of harm, a penetration tester would alert you to the problem and then you'd be able to fix it so that when somebody does try to cause you harm, that vulnerability is no longer there. And like I said, penetration testing, you're really looking at uh, SQL injection as a, a good example of what that will protect against because hopefully that will be picked up very quickly that you've left your site vulnerable to that. All right, let's cover some basics of good, just good old fashioned network security. All right, passwords. Let's talk about passwords, good passwords and bad passwords. So a strong password is a very useful thing. And obviously by strong, I'm talking about a mixture of letters and characters and special symbols and numbers and of a good length like six, well, it depends really, but seven, seven or eight characters as a minimum, perhaps even longer. And if you have a strong password, the reason why it has to be strong um, is it will protect against this thing called a brute force attack. Again, have a look at uh, the separate video about brute force attacks if you're not sure what they are. But if you've got a, uh, a strong password, you can definitely uh, protect against brute force attacks. You can password documents. You can password important data that you have in your computer or your user account, which will come into a moment, which will stop people from being able to access things that they shouldn't access. So let's talk about that. So user access levels. The idea is you, you've probably logged into your computer. Maybe it's one at home that you don't have a login to, but most most people end up um, logging into a computer. So there's an element of control there and that you can be, uh, somebody can decide what programs and data that you have access to. Now, if you think about it, that's kind of important because if you're like the manager of a big business, um, maybe you should have access to the file which has got everybody's salaries in because you know you need to run that business. You need to know how much uh, money you need to make every month to be able to pay everybody's wages. But perhaps the person who's just joined or is much more junior than somebody else doesn't need to know how much you get paid or how much somebody who's in a similar position to them gets paid uh, so they're not constantly asking for pay rises, for example. So user access levels, they control uh, what program the data you have access to. If you set them up correctly, it can definitely protect against data interception and theft as well. There's no reason for somebody to have access to, to sensitive data unless they need it as part of their job. And if they do have access, it just means it's risky. Uh, it could lead to them potentially stealing it or passing it on to somebody that they shouldn't. So definitely can help protect against data theft, use access, user access levels. Last one, um, physical security. This is what, if I'm going to say, uh, if I had a favorite, it would probably be physical security. There is nothing wrong with sticking a lock on a computer room if, it contain, if that computer contains um, important information that shouldn't be stolen, okay? So physical, physical security is stuff like locks, door locks, key cards, that sort of stuff. Um, and that can obviously protect your computer from data theft as well, uh, because, well, if you can't get to the computer, then that is a big barrier for you to be able to steal data from it to begin with, okay? So there are all the different types of ways that we can protect against attacks for computers. If you found that video useful, please hit the like button and hit subscribe to the channel. Keep learning and revising more computer science by clicking on the videos linked here.